So this was a real question I had once. Uh, we have all these little mini tables of data, non-normalized uh, tables going all the way down. I have a couple hundred rows as a sample, but in the real case, it was thousands of rows. And we want to create something like this that's, that's going to add up for every combination of business unit and year. We want to add up the numbers. But the twist is we only want to include tables in which the second word equals total. So we would ignore all the numbers here because this does not equal total. Here we would include these numbers. Uh, we would ignore all of these tables. This one we would include because the word total is there. So interesting twist to this. But before we jump into how to solve this, here's one question, main question I, I think is quite important. Is this a one-time task or is it a long-term project? If it's a long-term project, you're going to use this uh, over and over again, maybe get updated data. It's worth taking this really messy, chopped up data and normalizing it so that it looks like this in columns like this. Then we can very easily create a pivot table or maybe later on move this over this data over to a database. So if it's just a one-time task, then maybe we have a couple more options. Uh, what we could do is, well, before we get into how to solve it, we do have to know whether the, our coworker or client, the person that we're creating the solution for, do they want to understand it? If they don't care about understanding the solution, they just want the result, then we can solve it however we'd like. But if they want to understand it, then let's just say that they do. We have to be more careful with how we create a solution because we have to be able to explain it. So let's start off by uh, looking at a helper column approach. It's a helper column and a sum if, and this is actually how I solved it. Um, it's quick to create and it's also quick to explain. So we're gonna go over here and to this sheet right there. All it is is a simple helper column and a sum if. Now my helper column is pretty basic. All this does is a if if function with the and function here. There's two conditions and it's looking over here and it's saying, hey, if this is text and this is a blank, it means that this is the word that we want to repeat all the way down for this particular table. Once we get down here, we see the next one. Hey, it's happening again. There's a text above, there's a blank below. So we want to get this new word and put it here and it repeats. So whenever it's not true, what the formula says is just look above and get the value, repeat the value from above. So I love these helpers. They're so simple, so easy to use, and uh, super light. And they can be explained to anyone. So once again, it's just this little helper. As you see, it always repeats the, the title word, the second word. And then we're going to use that as our, one of our conditions here in our sum ifs. So our sum if says, look down at column E. Those are the numbers that we're going to be adding up, the sum range. You'll notice how this slides over nicely uh, all the way over. So the, it's always looking down below to add up the values. So uh, adding up the numbers in column E, and our condition is simply saying, hey, column B has to equal the word total, which is right there. In column D, well, that has to be equal to our business unit. And it's as simple as that, just this little helper and then the sum ifs. Now, you might be interested in how to solve this using an array formula. Um, if someone didn't care about, let's say that they don't care about uh, how the solution works, then we don't have to explain to anyone, right? So this is not applicable. And is it quick to create? Well, that all depends on one's knowledge of array formulas. But let's take a look. Let's see if I can explain this because this is not easy to explain. So uh, here is the final formula. And it's a little bit long. You notice those special brackets at the beginning and at the end. That's when you have to press Control, Shift, Enter. If I press Enter, it doesn't evaluate properly. We get a zero. When I do Control, Shift, Enter, we get those special brackets and we get our result. So how does it work? Well, let's go back and look at a normal offset. Uh, normal offset says this. Go to cell E8 and we want to go down 16 times until we see uh, this three. We want the three because this is a table, the first table that has the word total. So this is pretty much a manual thing. Uh, this is not dynamic. I, I give it a starting point or a reference point, go 16 down, do not go to the left or right, and we get the three. This formula is more dynamic. Uh, we're using the match function to look for the word total in here. When we find it, we have to add a three to it because we have to go uh, down three more cells, one, two, three. And our reference is here, 
in column E. So we would get this. Let me just test it. Watch, watch the threes up here. If I put in the word test, it changes, and we get that word test. Uh, but here's the problem. We know uh, by looking, knowing the data that the word total is in in many of the tables, uh, I don't know how many times, but it's all over the place. So how are we going to get, we have to, what we have to do with this offset is we have to put multiple row numbers in here to, to tell it to go down, start from the same place always, but go down multiple times. So let's go back to this formula and I'm going to show you what's inside of here. Uh, if I go inside of this array, so here, here's our starting point, our reference. All the magic happens here with the rows. You notice the columns are just that simple zero. Don't go to the left, don't go to the right, because our formula is going to slide over so that we are always adding up the numbers below. Uh, actually, the reference point does change. So here is just F8, so that we're going directly below to get those numbers, G and H. But let's go back to this one. How does this work? So just that same, just the E8 for this particular column, start there. All the magic happens in here. We have a condition. Uh, this is an array formula that has one condition. It says, if column F equals total, it always has to look at column F, because that's where we have those two words above each of these mini tables. If it equals total, give me the row numbers. So we populate this with row numbers. Um, and then it's basically loop, kind of looping and going and getting various numbers. And in the end, the sum function adds them all up. Um, but let's just go inside of this, and I'll show you what's in here. If I highlight this, press the F9 key, and I'm going to copy this. I mean, if I show you in here, there's a lot of stuff in there. But I'm going to copy those numbers out of there, press the Escape key, go over to Notepad, and I'm going to paste all of those things in there. So when it doesn't meet our condition, we get zeros. When it does meet the condition, we get those numbers. Now I'm going to highlight all of this, and I'm going to do Control h and say, Find all the zero semicolons replaced with nothing. Replace all. So this is what we're left with. We're actually telling it to go down 16 rows, which we already saw. But this is all dynamic now. Then go down 71 and get that number. Go down 126, get that number. So that's what it's doing. That's the beauty of these arrays. It's pulling various numbers into this formula. And in the end, we're simply adding up all the numbers. So we look in here. Uh, we're getting the actual values and it's just going to add them all up. So that is how it works. Arrays are amazing, but I would still say um, that it is better to use something like this. Quicker, easier to create. Uh, it's so simple, it's almost boring. This is also a great way to do it. You have to spend some time to normalize the data, but then the pivot table is so simple. And if you're in for an adventure, well, sure, this is fun, but it does take time to figure out how to get the condition in there and then how to get these counters to sort of adjust it. So whenever you find the word total, you're going down far enough to get the relevant number that corresponds to your business unit.